Thank you, Chair. First, I would, I would like to thanks to IDSA for inviting me to a very important the Aid New Delhi Dialogue and see a lot of old friends here. Uh, you know, one time I'm in Delhi, I always think about my late King Brothers, King Sihanouk and President late Nehru. I think it was a great time that Cambodia and, and India was a very close friend and still now. Let me just, uh, I have 15 minutes, so I will respect this. You know, as we talk about today's academic sessions and think tanks, uh, I already need have support from the ASEAN colleagues, think tanks, but I now today need your support to my definition about think tank from Indian colleagues. My defense minister called me, Prince Siriwood, we hear that you play with tanks. I said, no, sir, think tanks. So he asked me, what's it mean, think tanks? I said, we try to think without tanks, and I advise you not to use tank without thinking. So, my presentation will be a little bit concerning presentation because I'm, by nature, I'm very positive, optimistic guy. So people said, half empty, half full. I'm still endorsed or half full, but very attractive by the half empty, by nature. ASEAN found five decades ago is facing mounting strategic pressures and challenges. Without institutional reforms and capacity at the regional and national level, ASEAN may lose its international role in maintaining peace and development. The increasing strategic competition between China and the US and its ally in the Asia Pacific is threatening regional peace and stabilities. China and US are the two main actors in the region. Peace or conflicts depend very much on how they can coexist and accommodate each other's core interests. On this point, ASEAN, some ASEAN specialists and experts as the others' friends, we think that between US and China is one of the emerging powers India. On this point, how India talk about looking east, talking east, and we hope that from the eight dialogue, Delhi dialogue, acting east. From looking, talking, and now it's time to act east. That we would like to see. So between the two giants, the third party alternative is you, India. ASEAN centralities is shaping the involving regional securities and economic architecture, as you mentioned, Chair. It's critical to regional peace and development, but that centrality role needs to be earned by each member of ASEAN and the whole ASEAN family. If the members of ASEAN are not resilient in the face of major power competition and rivalry, its future is bleak. Uncertainties and unpredictabilities and hampering economic development prospect of the region, the rising sanction in the East and South China Sea, the irrationalities and unpredictability of North Korea, and the water securities and conflict in the Mekong region are the source of regional security concern. Now the question is who will be responsible to maintain regional orders and peace? The answer is clear. Every state, regardless of their size and power, share responsibility in maintaining peace and stability. International law and rule-based international relations need to be strictly observed. So far, no superpower has been the role of model in promoting rule-based international relations. The hegemonic powers of the US have very low record in respecting international laws. While the US is intervening in the South China Sea under the purview of freedom of navigation, it has not acceded to accede to the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea and close. The U.S. intervention in regional affairs 
is counterproductive to regional peace and stability. China, an emerging power, is learning from the U.S. Unfortunately, it expanding its legal global influence. China is trying to create new world order featuring emerging power. China promotes a multipolar world in which global and regional actors can act in unison to collectively address global issues. However, China has not proven to be the global leaders which adhere the principle of international law. The way China is handling the dispute of South China Sea is damaging China's global image as a peaceful development-oriented global power. It reminds me, Chair, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when my late brother King Sianu was invited to Manila in 1955, uh, late Secretary of State uh, from the U.S. asked Prince what are you pro-communist or pro-America? Silence. And he said, I'm pro-Cambodian. Now the same question is asked. Now we must say we are pro-ASEAN. Regardless of its past record of successful going through the storm of Cold War, ASEAN is facing new turn of its history. Complex powers competition and interdependence put ASEAN at serious test. The difference among the members with regards to regionally sensitive issues such as South China Sea, Hayes, and the Mekong River need to be holistically addressed. National and regional interests need to be balanced and harmonized. Japan and India are the other two main actors in the regional security issue. India look its policies and Japan proactive pacifism demonstrate a more assertive approach toward the Indo-Pacific region, a complex interaction and independence among China, India, Japan, and US is critical to regional peace and development. Creation or promotion of norm and rule-based international relations should be the two main function. ASEAN is coming decades, socializing major power, deepening complex interdependence, and building common norm are essential to peace and stability. India and other major powers should invest more in strengthening the capacity and the role of ASEAN. It is not for the interest of ASEAN and its members, but for all countries in the region. ASEAN-centric regional order should be promoted and nurtured. Let me conclude. Our security is interconnected. My security is your security. Your security is my security. A strong and relevant ASEAN serves the interests of all. India ASEAN strategic partnership play important role in strengthening the role of ASEAN. India should further support ASEAN on maritime securities, water, energy, food securities, nexus, cyber securities, climate change, and international crimes. India and the Mekong countries should work together closer on water resource security and sustainable governance on transboundary water resource. The Mekong River is being treated by a series of hydride power dam construction along the mainstream of the Mekong River. And let me just say one word. I was very impressed about one of the cheapest smartphones just launched two days ago, Freedom 251. I think ASEAN must buy a lot from India in terms of communication and IT co connectivity. Thank you. Thank you.